Got a fun video for you today because I've invited in a video guest, a good friend, Michael Dietrich Chastain, who also happens to be the author of a lovely book called Changes um, and the creator of this really nifty card deck called Changes Cards. And so today I've invited Michael to virtually join us in cyberspace to unpack uh, three tips and ideas on how to implement cultural change in an organization. So in this video, he talks about uh, seven elements. And so I will be sharing uh, seven elements, which I think you'll find really valuable. We'll cut to him for three really concrete tips. And by the end of this video, if you don't have some uh, brilliant, clever, but simple to implement strategies to make cultural change a little bit easier in your own world, then you should send me an angry email because this video didn't do its job. Here we go. So if you're new to the channel, I'm Chad. This channel is designed for leaders and educators to make connection and engagement really easy. And sometimes a part of that is we operate in organizations that are ever changing. And in the book, Changes, The Busy Professional's Guide to Reducing Stress, Accomplishing Goals, and Mastering Adaptability, which by the way, I feel uh, special or something because um, the copy of Changes that I found is not for resale. I got uh, an advanced copy, Michael had sent it to me to review before um, originally publishing. So um, uh, honored to be sharing this with you now. In the book, he talks about these seven different dimensions of change. And in the cards, uh, he's got a bunch of questions that are coded around this. And so if you are checking this out, think about the way that our cognition affects things and pay special note to the subtitles here too. Heart, these end up spelling changes as you go through them. Uh, as he says, uh, on accident, not on purpose. <laughs> um, action, nourishment, guts. Love that one, guts. I think that's something we forget oftentimes as uh, leaders, but there's a lot of science actually that um, has talked about like the gut brain and, and has connected, you know, Sometimes that gut response is a very um, thoughtful and on point intuition um, that's that's worth following. Then uh, lastly, environment, which we'll talk a little bit a little bit, and spirit. So first of all, I hope that if your Wi-Fi cuts out and this video stops, that just actually having the language of those seven different dimensions of change allow you a much more sophisticated view of how to create and implement change in an organization. Because if you change any one of those pieces, right, it's like pulling one string that may impact the others, but change operates within a system. Without further ado, let's invite Michael in to unpack one really beautiful, simple tip that lean on the values of your organization or your team or your group. Hey everybody, Michael here with Arc Integrated, reaching out to you to share three tips around how to effectively implement culture change. So before we get there, let's define culture in the context of an organization. What does culture mean? If you look at how society human resource management defines it, it's basically the expected uh, behaviors of a group as well as their uh, values and belief systems. So that's what a culture is. So when we think about how to change a culture, let's first look at values. And so a lot of organizations have you know, values listed on a wall, or maybe they were developed a long time ago and they're only semi understood, um, or maybe they haven't even been defined at all. So tip number one is to get clarity about what the values are that then, of course, drive uh, the behaviors within a culture. So that's tip number one is get clarity about the values. Awesome, Michael, thank you. Getting clarity on values is easy to say in a YouTube video. It is harder to do in reality. And so feel free at this point, um, it, depending on what context your organization is in, what stage your organization is, what size your organization is, it may be a really useful idea to just get a blank piece of paper and write down things that you think your group actually values. This is interesting, right? So things, things your group actually values, not things that people came up with at a strategic planning meeting to say that the organization values, but what do people actually value? Because it's a really useful idea 
to be able to tap into what people personally value and somehow weave that into your organizational values. Because if those align, people are gonna be much more interested and engage in whatever change journey you're taking them on. All right, tip number two that Michael's gonna share um, starts to hit on this word. He says the word operationalize. I like the word act, thinking about how to act on something. So uh, feel free if operationalize um, doesn't sing to you, feel free to edit the word to uh, think about this dimension of change, which is how are you going to act to make those values come alive? What you got, Michael? Tip number two is operationalize those values. And so what does that mean? That means that sometimes organizations have very clearly articulated values, but they're not living and breathing within the organization's culture or system. And so for instance, if your one of your values is, you know, transparent communication, but that's not really being practiced or it's not really being identified and checked in on, or if you ask an average employee and they can't, they can't, really quickly say, this is one of our core values and here's how it shows up and here's the behaviors that are exhibited, which reference the value, then it's not really living and breathing inside the organization's culture. So that's tip number two is to operationalize the values. Tip number two, there you go, love it. Uh, beautifully said, I don't have much to add there. After Michael shares his third tip, which has to do with environment, I'm gonna jump on and share one strategy that I found to be brilliantly useful in uh, gaining steam in a change effort. And that is the, uh, what I call the golden ticket method. So stick around for the golden ticket method. Without further ado, Michael, take us home with tip number three. And then tip number three is to define and utilize advocates. And so what does that mean? In order to create a change, it really requires uh, an environmental influence. And so as an example, in the book, uh, Changes, The Busy Professional's Guide to Reducing Stress, Accomplishing Goals, and Mastering Adaptability, uh, which came out last year, which I wrote, uh, one of the seven predictors of effective change making in that book is titled environment. And what that means is the people, places, and things that we are surrounded by influence our ability to create sustainable change. And so as that applies to an organization's culture change, we need advocates in our environment to drive the change or drive the culture that we want to expect. So we need to define those people that are the cheerleaders for the culture, that they know it inside and out, that they can articulate the values and how they're operationalized across the system. We need those advocates in our environment to drive that culture change. So that's tip number three. So again, those three tips are values clarity, getting really clear about, about what the values are. Tip number two is operationalizing those values. And then tip number three is defining and utilizing advocates. Thank you so much, I hope this was really helpful. Michael, thanks so much for coming in, sharing three wisdoms with us and reviewing them to make it accessible. And now, as promised, I'm just gonna share in super brief what this golden ticket methodology. Let's say, in an organization, you were trying to roll out um, some change around trying to um, build up the coaching culture in the organization. And you wanted leaders to be coaches rather than command and control, uh, tell me what to do sort of leaders. And so you were rolling out this training on how to coach well. One way to do it would be to force everybody to go through the training. The way that I would strongly suggest is create this training as an opportunity open it up to current leaders and emerging leaders to come who are interested. And so you've got your advocates or your early adopters that come into that uh, session. And the golden ticket methodology is very simply, hey, thanks for showing up and investing your time here, trusting that you had a really valuable time. You, the way we're gonna roll out this training is you get to pick two to three or nominate two to three other people to receive the quote golden ticket to be able to come to this training next. And so you have those early adopters invite people. You have advocates become the influencers as opposed to you as the at the top or you as the leader of making that top down change. It's more a little bit, that golden ticket methodology is a little bit more of a invite only grassroots sort of way to spread and uh, plant the seed for this coaching culture. Eventually what may happen is people who have gone to the training and have raved about it, 
now people start to want to go to the training. They're like, how do I get into this? And they're trying to figure that out. And that's a really useful, creating that drive or that enthusiasm for change is really fantastic. If you want to hold, take a whole nother deep dive down change enthusiasm, you should totally check out Cassandra Worthy and her work. She's amazing, has some brilliant ideas on how you um, not only uh, make change happen, but make change happen with enthusiasm. Before I say what I always say at the end of videos, um, if you wanna check out Michael's card decks or books, Amazon is the place to do it. It's a brilliant deck with questions that relate to each of the seven dimensions of change. There's ways to use them individually, in pairs, and with groups. Um, even though uh, we make card decks and these We Connect cards and We Engage cards and uh, other things, these changes cards are awesome. They are so good. They are so good to um, spark conversations around change and make change an experience rather than uh, something that people have to like either choose, like I'm gonna get on board with or not. Like involve people in the change process makes so much magic happen. All right, Whew. have an awesome day.